What is up guys, Nairs here from the A-Team. Today we are here at the Hurlbutt Visuals Clubhouse. If you don't know what that is, we will leave a link in the description below. And we're gonna be walking through how to film and light for black and white. Let's go. Sweet, so today we're here on set with my friend Justin Jones. Justin Jones is a cinematographer who has shot for Trippy Red, Anderson Pack, Diplo. Justin, when it comes to lighting for black and white, there are a few challenges because a lot of what we know goes out the window. Tell us some of your tips for lighting for black and white. Cool, so I have four tips for shooting black and white. First is going to be, don't worry about color temperature, it's gonna be black and white, so that doesn't matter. Number two is going to be quality of light, hard light, soft light, or a mix of both. Three is going to be texture, uh, adding textures and creating shadows, and four is going to be intensity, creating a bright spot in the frame to draw the eye. Awesome, let's go to set and check out some of these setups. Awesome, so we're here on set now with our first scene. Justin, what is the scene and how did you light it? Cool, so it's a very dramatic scene. Basically, it can be anything out of any horror film. First thing I was thinking about, quality of light. I chose hard light because it's a dramatic scene. I wanted to increase the contrast and give us more shadows. The next thing I did is I wanted to draw the eye to our actress and to the knife. So I made that the brightest part of our scene. Awesome, so walk us through light by light how you lit every part of this. Great, so I put two 300Ds and a 120D outside to create moonlight. I walked those back quite a ways just to sharpen our shadows. Second thing I did was I added smoke to the scene to kind of see those shafts of light. And because I walked the lights so far back, it was able to give me a really sharp kind of beam of light. The last thing we did is, well actually I didn't do it, Ted did it, is cut down a branch from Shane's backyard. We put them on C-stands to kind of give our light a little bit of texture and a little bit of movement in the background. Awesome, let's go check out that footage now. Awesome, so we're here at our next setup. Justin, you went a little softer with this lighting. Tell us about this scene and how you lit it. Sure, so in this scene, we were concentrated more on beauty, so we went for a softer look. But the same rules still apply when shooting in black and white. The first thing we did or didn't do is worry about color temperature. We had tungsten practicals and a daylight key, but once again, it's black and white. Second thing we did is use softer sources. It helps get a beauty look and really helps hide blemishes and stuff like that. The third thing we did is we used the intensity of the light to draw our eye to our actress, and we also used the leading line of the practicals to pull the two actors together. Fourth thing we did, the image was looking a little bit flat, so I brought in a flag that kind of just stopped down our background and kind of separated the talent from the background and the wall. Super cool. So take us through light by light how you lit the scene. Cool, so for the first thing we did is we used the 120D with a softbox as her key, made it really soft and kind of flat and frontal on her face. The second thing we did is we added another 120D with a mini light dome as her backlight. That kind of kept it a little soft, but still gave us a rim. Third thing we did is we used two 300Ds on the patio, just kind of coming in as moonlight. We had them dialed way down, but they could have been 120Ds, but that was what we had at the time. And the fourth thing we did is turned on practicals over the pool table, and that just allowed us to bring up the ambience in the room and light the pool table. And I also noticed that you enhanced the practical lighting a little bit. What did you do to the practicals? Sure, so the practicals when we first turned them on were extremely bright. So the first thing we did is we changed the bulbs out for dimmer bulbs. Then we used ND and diffusion to kind of soften them a little bit and take the intensity down a little bit more so we could open up that iris and kind of blur our background. Awesome, let's go check out that footage. So there's the episode of 4 Minute Film School with Justin Jones. Justin, walk us through your four tips for lighting black and white one more time. Sure, so first is gonna be color temperature. Since we're shooting black and white, it doesn't really matter, so use what you have. Second is going to be quality of light. Use hard and soft light to your advantage here because you don't have color, so it becomes a lot more important. 
third is going to be intensity. Make sure you make what's most important in the scene brighter than the rest. It'll help draw the eye. And fourth is gonna be using shadow to kind of cut light and make sure the light falls where you want it. Awesome. If you like this episode, make sure to follow Justin Jones at Justin Jones DP. Follow Aperture on Facebook, Instagram, The Works. We want to give a huge shout out to the Hurlbut Visuals team for letting us shoot at the Clubhouse. For those of you who don't know, they shoot all of Shane's Inner Circle's educational content here. We'll leave the link in the description below. Also, leave a comment below with the next educational video you want to see us make next. We're going to be picking the best comment and giving them an M9. I'm Nares from the A-Team. We'll catch you guys next time.